Let me show a very important um, thing in this discussion, a particular topic in this discussion which uh, makes the study of uh, quantum Hall effect so uh, interesting. I have mentioned this several times that the system uh, which is a two dimensional electron gas is a dirty system, it does not have any translational invariance. Um, uh, that is uh, there is no space translational invariance and no time reversal invariance because of the presence of uh, the magnetic field uh, there. However, uh, the plateaus are very robust, uh, they are so much so that uh, they are used in the metrology of uh, you know fixing the value of the resistance. So, what makes this uh, so robust? Is it uh, really some intrinsic constant that is coming into the picture? And because uh, to show that we had introduced various um, uh, formalism that is uh, related to uh, studying uh, a crystal lattice in presence of a magnetic field. Uh, we will continue doing that because uh, we will uh, do graphene, but let me uh, take a break uh, for the moment and show you that the Hall plateaus are related to a topological invariant. Uh, which is called as a churn number or uh, in general which has a name as a, a TKNN invariant. I have uh, mentioned this earlier, uh, it is in the name of four people. So, uh, that is uh, an invariant that we are going to uh, derive for the Hall uh, conductivity. And we have derived the form of the Hall conductivity uh, via the Kubo formula. Okay. So, uh, Hall quantization and the churn number. Uh, let me write it instead of writing churn number, let me write uh, topological invariant. And in order to do that, uh, we will follow a trick and the trick is basically just to suit our requirements. Uh, you know that uh, if there is a, a magnetic field, there will be a flux. Uh, flux of the magnetic field which is nothing but the strength of the field uh, multiplied by the area that it uh, pierces through. So, uh, we have talked about such fluxes and we have uh, you know uh, denoted them by this phi uh, which is nothing but B into A, A is the area through which it is uh, threading. Uh, we have also seen that you know if uh, this phi by phi 0 uh, and this phi 0 being uh, h over e which is a flux quantum, if this is a number, okay, so an integer say for example, a whole number that is, uh, then uh, the system properties will remain invariant. So, as soon as it takes a number such as say 1, 2, 3, the system will not um, will remain invariant that is the properties of the system will remain invariant. Uh, the interesting thing occurs when it is not an integer and uh, a fraction of the form p by q uh, where p and q are uh, co prime integers. So, uh, we want to sort of study the effect of this flux uh, for the quantum Hall system. Now, we have done this, it is not that we have not done this, we have done this exactly when we uh, derived the Kubo formula. Okay. But here uh, in order to link it to the topological invariant or which is the churn number, which we will call it as a churn number, uh, let us uh, apply a trick such that we thread uh, not one flux, but there are two fluxes. So, And what I mean by that is the following. So, take a, a, a square uh, system, okay, and of length say Lx and Ly, okay. And now you use a periodic boundary condition, let me show it with a color, that is you fold it in this direction and you fold it in this direction. Okay. So, we just fold them in both the direction in the x and the y direction. 
So, the resultant structure becomes a torus, okay? a torus like this which we have uh, seen earlier in the context of what we have called as a corbino disc or a corbino ring. So, it becomes like a torus of this form or you have seen donut, so it is like that, a structure like that. So, uh, this is under periodic boundary condition. Now, this uh, derivation the way we are following a, is uh, very typical and um, only used uh, in a few places uh, particularly you can see this uh, article by David Tong he does that. But actually originally it has been done in a different way which uh, appears in the paper by uh, this uh, T K N N Thaulis, Komoto, uh, Nightingale and uh, Dennis. And then, uh, so what, what we mean by uh, threading two fluxes? So, we have uh, A x which is equal to a phi x by L x and we have uh, A y which is equal to a phi y and L y and a plus a B x. Okay? So, that is we have thread two fluxes and they look like uh, as if uh, you know there is a, a flux that is uh, threading here. let us call that as phi x and along this we thread a phi y. Okay? So, uh, phi x is through the opening of the torus and the phi y is in the annular region. Okay? So, there is a, uh, so there is a uh, phi y flux that is threading this just uh, in keeping with uh, the structure that we have drawn in the vertical which is uh, which is that uh, phi x. Okay? Then in that case of course, your a becomes equal to uh, a x uh, x cap plus uh, a y y cap. Okay? And uh, we uh, remind you that uh, the perturbation term which we have used in deriving or rather uh, deducing the Kubo formula is uh, h prime it is equal to minus j dot a and in this particular case uh, so it will be like minus j x a x plus or rather a minus a j y a y and so on. Okay? So, this is exactly similar to earlier excepting that we are now talking about threading uh, two different fluxes as I said it is just to help us in getting the result. In fact, uh, this will tell you just in a few uh, steps down the line, it will tell you that uh, we uh, come very close to the Kubo formula and this is actually uh, aiding that. Okay? So, this can be uh, written as, um, so i which is x y, this is equal to a j i a phi i by L i where i is x and y. So, phi i is phi x by L x and then uh, phi y by L y uh, and then uh, this uh, is uh, the one that you have uh, here. Okay? And uh, this is the perturbation of course and this perturbation we want to uh, see how this perturbation affects the ground state. Okay? So, the idea is to see the perturbation affects the ground state, ground state with a psi 0 and uh, this psi 0 as, as we have discussed earlier it can be a many body state. By, and it can um, contain any term uh, excepting the j dot a term which appears uh, because of the inclusion of the magnetic field or the magnetic flux. Okay? It can also have interaction terms. Uh, so, we want to uh, see the effect of uh, h prime on this uh, by using a first order perturbation theory. Okay. So, h prime is uh, seen as a perturbation and then we can write down this psi 0 prime, it is equal to a psi 0 in the first order. Uh, we can write this as some n or m 
uh, does not matter. I mean this n is not equal to uh, psi 0. So, this is not the ground state. So, it will promote the j dot a term will promote particular uh, uh, state or rather it acts on a uh, ground state and uh, the perturbation promotes it to the system to the excited state. So, this is or let me write it as psi n. So, this psi n is not equal to psi 0. So, this psi n and h prime and then psi 0 and then it is uh, E n minus E 0 and uh, what I have done is that I have introduced uh, a completeness of states and that is why I sum over psi n which is not of course equal to psi 0 because if that is the case then the denominator diverges. Okay. So, uh, we uh, are uh, careful in not dealing with degenerate systems and uh, make sure that this h prime really promotes the system from the ground state to a state uh, which is a low lying one of the low lying excited states. Okay. So, this is the um, expression for uh, psi 0 prime which is a new ground state because of this perturbation. This is the first order correction. Of course, the first order correction in energy is given by so, if you want that then the first order correction in energy is simply given by a psi 0 uh, h prime and a psi 0. We are interested in the state not the energy here. Okay. So, uh, if you consider this uh, psi n how psi n responds to an infinitesimal flux then what we uh, can uh, find out is that we can find out a del psi 0 and a del phi. Okay. So, that is the how a system responds to an infinitesimal flux and that is nothing but 1 over L i and a sum over this psi n of course, not equal to psi 0 or we can write it in instead of writing it psi n not equal to psi this thing we can just simply write it e n not equal to e 0 that is probably more correct way of writing. Okay, so, this, so, E n not equal to E 0 and uh, this is equal to a psi n and a j and i of course and then you have a psi 0 and uh, the E n minus E 0 and a psi n. Okay. So, I have just written uh, h prime as uh, j i phi i and uh, then taking this uh, uh, derivative of this uh, wave function the, the ground state wave function for an infinitesimal change in the flux. So, you thread the flux uh, and uh, thread it slowly. Uh, we have discussed this in the context of Corbino ring and what we mean by slow uh, varying of the flux. Uh, so, we do that and, and then we uh, land up with this expression for this uh, uh, del psi 0 uh, del phi i which tells you that how the ground state response to the perturbation. Now, uh, just reminding you of the Kubo formula, the Kubo formula said that uh, the sigma x y uh, some geometrical factor which is uh, this a, let me write a area itself okay? because there is a already there as a vector potential and uh, then uh, you have uh, these E n not equal to E 0 and then it is a psi 0 and a j y and a psi n and a psi n psi n j x psi 0 and minus psi 0 j x uh, psi n psi n j y psi 0 and divided by E n minus E 0 square you should go and look back uh, the derivation of the Kubo formula and this is exactly what we had written earlier. Now, you see that uh, this is this term there which looks like this term here okay? and each of these terms I mean this one as well as this one and so on, this one and so on. So, they look like this. So, this quantity uh, that is this del psi 0 del phi i actually enters into the Kubo formula and that is why we will write each of these terms in terms of this del psi 0 del phi i. Okay. So, that tells you that uh, my sigma x y can be written as uh, i h cross which is there and uh, then uh, of course, uh, there is a, a del of psi 0 uh, 
uh, del phi y because of this uh, j y uh, then a uh, del uh, psi 0 del phi x now it is a j x because of this j x term and then uh, this is equal to and each one of them is bringing along uh, uh, e n minus e 0. So, that makes it e n minus e 0 square and of course, we know that uh, these uh, e n and e 0 are different. So, that the denominator is uh, uh, not allowed to blow up and then uh, so you have a del psi 0 del phi x and a del psi 0 del phi y. Okay, so, this is uh, your sigma x so which can further be written in a slightly different form in which we uh, do a del del phi y and, uh, and do a, a psi 0 and a del psi 0 uh, del phi x and uh, minus a del del phi x and uh, you have a psi 0 and a del psi 0. Uh, del phi uh, y. So, this is a form of the Kubo formula and uh, this is what we will uh, you know uh, sort of deal with. So, this is the present form of Kubo formula in terms of this present variables where we have introduced two fluxes. Uh, now, you see that uh, the why we have uh, introduced two fluxes is because we needed to get this uh, j x and j y and that is why the, uh, the j dot a otherwise if it has one component then we will get just uh, you know we will not get a, a formula like what we have done. I mean there is no um, restriction on uh, threading a flux as long as uh, the requisition or the parent uh, conditions are being satisfied. Okay. Now, let me uh, sort of introduce a variable which is uh, a variable that varies from 0 to 1 uh, and it can take value any uh, fraction. So, we can write this as a phi i divided by phi 0 which uh, takes values um, between in the limit 0 and 1. And uh, because this is what we have discussed that uh, the system actually uh, when you thread the flux slowly each one of the fluxes phi x and phi y are being increased uh, from some 0 to uh, phi 0 and then uh, of course phi 0 to 2 phi 0 and so on. So, I am just talking about just uh, you know uh, between 0 and 1 but then of course it, it takes any integer values I mean it can go from 0 to n. The idea is that in order to you know make more sense let me multiply it by 2 pi uh, such that we find out an angular variable and uh, this is like uh, a phi i by phi 0 uh, is uh, let me call that as um, an angular variable say let us call it as a theta i. So, that theta i uh, varies from uh, 0 to 2 pi. Okay, I have just uh, changed the condition so that I do not have to talk about any number uh, and I can uh, periodically talk about uh, 0 to 2 pi that is uh, when phi i divided by phi 0 uh, takes some arbitrary values. Okay. So, now uh, let me uh, sort of take a little bit of time off from this and uh, uh, let me introduce quantity called as uh, Berry phase and Berry connection. And we will come back to this in just a while. Okay. So, what is Berry phase? So, Berry phase is the simplest demonstration of how uh, you know geometry uh, and topology both can emerge in a quantum system. Okay. Uh, in order to understand it better, uh, let me uh, sort of write down a Hamiltonian which, which depends on uh, a parameter lambda uh, and which is a function of t. It is not only one parameter that it can depend on, it can depend on a number of parameters like lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4, etcetera. But uh, we are just talking about just one of them without any uh, harming the generality of the discussion. Uh, and uh, this is a, a function of t. So, lambda is a function of t and so, h implicitly uh, is a function of t. Okay. 
Now, what uh, equation do we have to uh, solve? We have to solve a time dependent Schrodinger equation, which is I h cross uh, del psi uh, t uh, del t, which is equal to h uh, lambda t psi. Okay. So, this is the equation that we have to solve and uh, the general solution of this is uh, uh, psi of t uh, is equal to some u of t uh, and uh, psi and let us uh, introduce a basis which is say a phi of t. Okay. So, phi of t is the uh, basis for the problem. Now, uh, what we can do is that of course, this phi of t uh, it depends on uh, both lambda and t. So, in fact, we will uh, do better justice if we write it as phi uh, lambda of t, but uh, this uh, denotes the basis. So, this lambda of t. So, this is how the wave function evolves and um, if we claim that uh, phi of uh, uh, lambda at 0. Uh, at t equal to 0, if that is equal to psi at uh, t equal to 0, if this is true, then um, we can uh, fix that uh, u at t equal to 0 is equal to 1. Okay. Now, uh, let me take this space as well and we will come back to this uh, thing, this discussion that we have been doing. So, now the uh, whole idea is that uh, we uh, want to find uh, or determine this u of t as this uh, lambda is changed uh, via changing t over a full cycle. That is you uh, start from a point and then you come back to a point uh, after a complete rotation and then you ask the question what happens to u of t uh, does it uh, ultimately you know the question is that whether it picks up a phase which is irreducible and it is not the uh, usual dynamical phase that we are aware of and usual dynamical phase is nothing but exponential i e t by h cross. So, does it pick up a phase that is uh, uh, anything uh, more uh, significant and, and then uh, that does not go away because this dynamical phase does not appear in the uh, probability density. Uh, because uh, the moment you take the mod square of a wave function the uh, this thing goes away. But however, here uh, it is um, it is important and uh, I let me just write down the solution of this. Uh, you can follow R. Shankar's uh, quantum mechanics book for a, a very nice and detailed solution or rather discussion on this uh, Berry phase and so on. Okay. So, uh, u of t uh, is just basically this uh, ansatz had to be plugged into this equation. So, this is equation 1, this is equation 2 and maybe this is equation 3. So, if you plug in uh, 2 into 1, and then use of course the condition that uh, then you take a overlap with this and take a overlap with a conjugate psi. Okay. Now, if they do that then uh, u of t comes out to be some exponential uh, minus i and uh, this is written with a curly a and this is a i lambda um, and so this is a lambda i dot dot means it is a d lambda i dt and then there is a dt there. So, this phase is not like the dynamical phase where this a i is called as a Berry connection. Uh, which is defined as a minus. So, this is a function of lambda and, and that is how it the time dependence in the Berry connection enters. It is of course, a vector quantity. It is minus i and uh, you have a phi n uh, del del lambda i and a phi n and so on. So, this is your Berry connection which enters uh, in the integrand and uh, inside the you know exponent of this uh, u of t and uh, this uh, particularly this quantity is called as a Berry phase. So, 
this e to the power i gamma uh, which is equal to e to the power this minus uh, this uh, a i just make sure that you do not think that this a is the vector potential Th that is why I am writing it with a curly a uh, this is a lambda and a d uh, lambda. So, this is called as a Berry phase. So, this is related to this uh, the time evolution of the u of t operator and it is called as a Berry phase and uh, that is why you know uh, the Berry phase is a very important quantity it is one of the topological markers of a system a Berry phase that is uh, different than 2 pi uh, will tell you that there is something non-trivial going on in the system and uh, I will not prolong this discussion but as I said that please look at this. Uh, R Shankar uh, quantum mechanics. In fact, this uh, Berry connection is uh, like a vector potential, actually, like a vector potential, and if you take the curl of that, uh, it gives you a uh, quantity which is called as a Berry curvature and this Berry curvature when you integrate over the entire Brillouin zone uh, that gives you the uh, topological invariant namely the churn number all right. Then uh, of course, we are uh, nearly done we write down the Berry connection for this particular uh, problem which we have been doing with uh, the two fluxes. So, the Berry connection is uh, this A i uh, and uh, which is a function of phi now it is uh, that lambda is nothing but phi here and minus this and the psi 0 and del del theta i theta i is a variable angular variable and a psi 0 ok. So, this is called as a Berry connection and from there you can calculate the uh, Berry curvature. So, uh, the Berry connection is analogous to uh, the vector potential. And uh, the Berry curvature which is analogous to the magnetic field can be obtained by taking a curl of that and uh, one writes it as a curly f and x y which is equal to del this curly uh, Berry connection by uh, theta y and minus del a uh, y del theta x that is take a curl basically. So, b equal to curl a. So, this is like a b uh, which is what we have said and when you do that it becomes uh, something that is familiar. So, it is a del del theta y let me just remind you of this. So, we had this del del phi y which is now a del del theta y and so on. And, and these all these things will be written in the present notation which is del del theta y and a psi 0 and uh, a del a psi 0 del theta x and minus del del theta x which is equal to a psi 0 uh, del psi 0 del theta y and uh, and uh, then this is uh, what is the Berry curvature and uh, now if you go back and just take a one to one correspondence with the Kubo formula then you will see that the Kubo formula or the conductivity tensor can be written as a minus uh, e square by h and these uh, f of x y. So, this is uh, Hall conductivity. in terms of the Berry curvature. Okay. So, this is that formula that uh, the Hall conductivity is expressed in the form of Berry curvature and uh, we have already uh, introduced this k space representation by going to square lattice and, and writing down you know blocks theorem etcetera. So, this will help us actually to calculate uh, the uh, Berry curvature and so on for a, for a given system and uh, then the total Hall conductivity. So, this can be uh, these uh, quantity uh, which is a Berry curvature 
can be integrated integrated to basically show that this is uh, uh, over these over the surface of the torus which is what we have done uh, to the the square shaped system um, as if the 2d electron gas is uh, confined there uh, you don't have to talk about the 2d electron gas it could be any system it could be a crystal lattice um, integrated over the surface of the torus okay now again going back to uh, the discussion that we had done at some point of time that this integration of this berry curvature uh, which is like a gaussian curvature uh, and when you integrate over the entire system uh, which in this case in this particular case it's the brillouin one zone so then this sigma xy for a k space system that is a crystal lattice this surface of the torus is nothing but the brillouin one zone is, is what i wanted to say so that all our discussions that we are having now uh, would be valid in case of a crystal lattice whether you take it a square lattice or you take it more exotic lattices all these discussions will uh, go through. So, sigma x y is nothing but a minus e square over h uh, and this is over a torus and you integrate this thing over a torus on this angular variable and this is equal to that. Okay. So, this is a very important expression and this quantity is called as a churn number. So, which is a topological invariant. I mean or we can call it a TKN and invariant okay. So, that your sigma x y becomes equal to uh, C with the, of course, you can either absorb the minus sign or even if you do not it does not matter C e square over h and C can take only integer values. I leave it uh, this discussion at this point, but may come back to this later that why C uh, is necessarily an integer. But of course, the proof has been provided by the experiment. Experiment says that the whole conductivity is quantized in terms of E square over H and this churn number can take values which are 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on and this uh, is called as a z invariant. Okay? It can take any value, any integer value and it, it is necessarily an integer and that is the reason that it is so robust because of this uh, discussion if you follow right from the beginning that we had done just now, uh, you will see that it is completely general and it does not uh, talk about uh, any crystal lattice or a 2D electron gas, we have just taken a sample and have uh, introduced periodic boundary condition, threaded two flux and wrote down uh, a simple uh, perturbation theory in that j dot a minus j dot a term and then we have cast it in the form of Kubo formula uh, and this Kubo formula gives you the Hall conductivity which is uh, some c times e square over h, maybe minus c times e square over h where c remains an integer. Because c is an integer, uh, we are going to see plateaus in the Hall conductivity. Necessarily, the plateaus would survive okay, under this condition. All right. So, uh, this uh, is very fundamental uh, in nature and that is why uh, the uh, Hall effect is uh, such an important uh, experiment and uh, it warrants a completely new uh, look at the systems. The system is not yet interacting, uh, but if uh, suppose we include the interactions and then more exotic things will happen which we will see in the fractional quantum Hall effect. Uh, but however, at this point it is uh, the C uh, denotes the integer uh, number which, which uh, uh, corresponds to the uh, plateaus in the integer quantum Hall effect. Mm -hmm.